Hello once again and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're continuing with our Sea Shack scene. In this particular episode I'm working on the small details that give it the character, so the boat, the flag and so on, and I'll be pointing out tips and tricks along the way. Hopefully you're getting used to the interface, so I'll go a little bit quicker. So let's get straight into it. I'm going to quickly do the flag. I'm going to cheat a bit. I'm just going to copy this for the flagpole. So Shift D, scale in everything but the Z. So Shift Z, to scale it right down. And then grab it and move it up as if it's going to be my flagpole. I attach my flagpole to the stilt, so I'll put it around there. And it's getting awkward, so let's turn snapping on and then snap it to that point. Now let's turn snapping off. Think of the shortcut, shift tab, shift tab, and grab that into position. Let's move our pivot point to the bottom. Have a think how to do that. So shift right click to put our 3D cursor in position. With my object selected, up to object mode, set origin to 3D cursor. Now I can scale this in the Z and it will go up and down at the top which is what I want. So simple flagpole, let's add a flag, shift right click, shift A to add, mesh plane, rotate in the X axis, and scale it down, move it into position. Now notice I'm doing this in object mode, so that may cause problems, we'll see in a bit. Scale in Z, and I'll make this a bit wider, so scale in the X. It'd be easier to have the pivot point here really for a flag, but I'll just move it into position and be a bit rough at the moment. Into edit mode with tab, control R, perhaps four loop cuts there. Full stop on my numpad to zoom in on my object. Now it's not quite in position, so back to object mode, grab in the Y axis to move that to the actual flagpole. Back into edit mode, grab one of our edges with proportional editing on. We can just G to grab and move these around so it's a bit flag-like waving in the wind. We might want a couple of loop cuts across the middle here. That way we can go to vertex mode with one on the keyboard, grab these two, and give it that sort of curve outwards like this. Then back into object mode and move it into position. I think I'll bring these ones down. I don't think that works otherwise. Just add a bit of variation to it as well. And there we've got a simple flag. Now notice it didn't actually make much difference that the scale, if I press N on my keyboard and go up to my item, was not all uniform. Because I wasn't adding modifiers or sculpting it or anything like that, so it didn't seem to have too much effect. So I'm just pointing out these things to try and help you when you're modelling. What about the boat? Now the boat I think is a tiny bit tougher. So we'll do that. Shift right click and the boat can be positioned around there. Now, just a quick aside, make sure you are in object mode when you're adding your objects. Let's say I wasn't and I had an object selected and I was in edit mode and I add a new object down here. So shift A and notice my mesh menu is the only menu that comes up because I've already got a mesh up here. So I can only add a mesh to this already made mesh. So we'll add a cube and already we can see that there's a mistake. It's in edit mode, so there's going to be issues. But I'm going to model this as if I've made that mistake because it's a common mistake that beginners make. So full stop on my numpad. We'll zoom into the selected. Let's scale in the Z first. I've still got proportional editing on, so watch out for that. Control R to set a loop cut across there. Let's grab both these two and pull them forwards. G then X. And grab all these at the back. G then X and pull them back. Maybe select these two here now, G then X, and just give it a bit of a curve there. And one more loop cut down the middle here, and we'll just scale that outwards in the Y, so S then Y. Just have a quick look back there and see if that's the right size. That's looking okay. Let's select the bottom vertices and scale those in. Just see whether it's looking right. Perhaps a bit more curvature, so a loop cut round here. Double tap and then scale that out. And it's looking fairly boat-like. I think it's a little bit wide, so I'll select them all and scale in the Y. Somewhere about there. Maybe a bit tall as well, scale in the Z. Excellent. 
Okay, let's go back into object mode and let's move this into position. Ah, but no, I've joined my two objects together. What a pain. Sorry for my silly acting. So I want to separate this object. Have a think, how do I separate objects? And I have mentioned this before in previous episodes. We go into edit mode and with those objects selected, so if they weren't selected, I can select them now by box selecting them, or if they're actually on top of each other, I can deselect all by double tapping A and move my cursor over one of the vertices, edges or faces that's linked to that object and then press P for separate by selection. Actually, even easier, sorry I forgot, in edit mode, select everything, P to separate by loose parts. That makes much more sense. Now that's separated from that. The only problem I'll have then if I select that and I select my boat, if I can, you'll notice the object origin is all the way up here. Easy to sort out. Have a think. Into object, set origin, and this time origin to geometry. And it's in the middle of my boat. Let's get back into edit mode now. Oh, actually I was going to move my boat, wasn't I? So let's grab that in the Y, move it out slightly. And in a moment I'll grab it in the Z so it's got a bit of an angle to it. When you've got something sort of fairly natural like the C that will affect objects, you should put them R than Z and rotate them slightly and not have everything really uniform. I'm just going to undo that because it actually makes it tougher to model if you've rotated it slightly. Into edit mode, select those top faces with three. One, two, three, four, just there. Inset them with I, so there's the inset. Remember you've also got the tools down the side here and you can change the thickness there. And then we can press E to extrude and pull those down. Now I've made this far too wide, so I can just select that loop of faces there with Alt left click, but remember it's one of those edges that's across the flow and then I can scale that down. I've got proportional edit on though, so I'll right click that to cancel it, turn proportional edit off and scale that down. Now that's still not working for me because it's all coming into the center like this. So that's a bit of an awkward one. The easiest way to get around that is to actually select this inside loop here and scale that up, but not in the Z, so Shift then Z. Somewhere around there, just watch out here. Can you see that bit of overlap? So I need to select those bottom faces and just scale those in a touch. Let's turn X-ray mode off for a moment and see what that boat looks like. I'm going to have to grab it in the Z-axis a bit as the water's coming through. You could do what's called a Boolean operation to sort that out, but it's just easier to make sure that our bottom is slightly above the water. It gets a bit awkward and complicated to sort that out properly. And I don't think it's necessary for a beginner's tutorial like this. So the rest of the boat were a few planks going across and the oars are fairly straightforward to model. So I'll leave those for now. Something else that's worth knowing how to model is the ropes and the wires. So I'm going to do the washing line over here. You can do the same thing for the fishing rod. I'm going to connect this weird sticky outie pole to this one with a washing line. So shift right click to set my 3D cursor there. Shift A to add. This time we're going to use curves and a bezier curve. Now these take a bit of getting used to, but they're very handy. Tab into edit mode and you've got these funny lines which make it look very confusing. But these red things are called handles and you can actually rotate those and you can see the curve changing and adapting to the handles in a sort of tangent type way. Hopefully that makes sense. Don't panic if it doesn't. Let's move those into position. So G to grab as normal, move that over to there. Let's turn snapping on for this, this will make it easier. So G to grab, snap it to that point there. Let's move around a bit with this one. G to grab and snap it to that point. Then I can rotate this. And the curve is actually the black line. And I'll rotate this one. So we have a nice simple curve going from there to there. Back into object mode and you can see a nice simple line, but we want to be able to control the thickness of our rope. Well, we've got a new tool menu over here and it's the Bezier curve. There's only a few things that I feel are important at the moment. Shape 3D and then geometry. It's all down to the bevel here. So just set your bevel. The resolution is how detailed that looks and we can go right down to one for the sake of render speeds. I think that's a bit thick actually because this is a washing line. So about two centimeters sounds good. So we've got a simple line there for hanging our washing. Now what about a fishing rod line? 
That was slightly different because it's got lots of points to it. So let's quickly make the fishing rod. I'll grab one of these poles, shift D to duplicate. Snapping still turned on, so it's snapped to there. Let's rotate it round and scale in the Z. Double Z, that is, the local Z axis. And make sure, I mean, it could be standing up like that, but mine was lying down. And let's move that a bit further in. And rotate in the Z, so it's just sort of sticking over the edge like this. That's great. Now we need a line going across there and straight down. So 3D cursor into position, Shift A to add, Bezier curve. I'll rotate this in the Z 90 degrees so it's roughly in line. And just move it roughly into position. I've still got snapping turned on, remember. Shift Tab to turn that off or the magnet up here. And into edit mode. Grab one of my handles. Let's move it to the base of the fishing rod and rotate it round. So now my curve is going along my fishing rod. Another one there. And I want to add a point, so the fishing rod sort of coming down and then up, down, then up like this sort of thing, as if it's held on by those little ringlets. So there's two ways. First of all, grab the end one and press E to extrude. It looks a bit weird to start off with because the handle's pulling it all over the place. We can scale these down as well. That might help us. I'm going to scale this one down as well. So I'm just selecting that and this one as well. So on this one again, E to extrude to the end and then E to extrude straight down. Now this looks a bit weird, doesn't it? And at any point you want to change these handles so they're sort of straight lines, you can press V for the handle type. And at the moment, it's on aligned. We want to change it to vector, and that will give it a sharp turn like that. We can then change our handles a bit. Let's rotate this one so it's in line. And we're starting to get there, it's all a bit all over the place at the moment. We could turn snapping on again, that might help us to get these points correct. This one across a bit, and this one just down here, and rotate into position. It can look a bit confusing, but once you get used to it, it's fairly straightforward. I'm also able to select the ends of the handle and press G to move them around. And that's important for this vector one here. Let's move this one into position. Scale that down a touch. And let's just go into object mode and see what that looks like. And that's not looking too bad. Obviously I need to extend this right down to the C. So grab in the Z axis and down it goes. Let's add a bit of depth to our bevel. Two centimeters should be fine. It's actually a little thick. I suppose that would be a very thick fishing line, so down a bit more. One centimeter, still very thick fishing line, but you get the idea. The best way to get used to curves is just to play around with them a bit. You might want to add some rope and things as if the shack's being pulled together by rope or some rope around fixings and things. Certainly some rope to tie your boat onto your stilts. So have a go at that. So that's enough for this episode. I'm sure there's more things that you'd like me to go through. Just comment below and I'll add those in. Someone asked me about a night scene and strangely I have set up a night scene so I'll go through that next time as well. And if we've got time in the next episode, we'll talk about game optimization and exporting to other programs. If there's not enough time, then we'll do another episode on that. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.